Hi everyone, in this video we're going to start talking about what's called hypothesis testing. So hypothesis testing. So before we talk about hypothesis testing, let's quickly talk about what we have been doing. So uh, before we had what was called estimation. So before we were estimating parameters. Remember a parameter is an unknown number that's computed from a population that tells you something about the population. For example, the population mean is an example of a parameter. So let's say we have mu and this is the population mean. And then here's our population. So let's draw a little picture. These are the people. Let's say they're people. Okay, we can assume we have more than this many people. And it's impossible usually to analyze entire populations. So what you do is you take some of the people from a population that's called a sample. So we would take a sample from our population. Most of the time the homework problems take the sample for us. And then we would say something like, you know, mu is between 50 and 80 with some level of confidence. So with 95% confidence, the population mean is between 50 and 80. So that's called estimation. We were providing a range of values for an unknown number, like a population mean, or sometimes a population percentage. So now we're doing something very, very different. So now we're doing what's called hypothesis testing. So hypothesis testing. It's a little more sophisticated. So again, we have we have a population. Let me switch the color here. Let's make the people blue. All right, so there's our population. And same thing, we have a population mean or proportion. So let's just, just use a mean. And as before, we take a sample from our population. So here's our little sample of the people from the population. So if this was estimation, we would provide a range of values for our population. We would say, you know, mu is between 50 and 80, or mu is between 100 and 120. But it's not. It's hypothesis testing. So now what we do is we ask a question, and then we answer it. So maybe we ask, is mu greater than 50? So is the population mean bigger than 50? We will answer this. So we answer this question. We answer this via a hypothesis test. So we use a hypothesis test to answer this question. So a, hypo a hypothesis test is a structured argument for answering questions about parameters like population means or population proportions. You can even answer questions about two means or two proportions and so on. So because it's a structured argument, there's a lot of components to a hypothesis test. So in this video, let's keep going. Let's talk about those components. And at the end of the video, I'll give you like the five steps that people usually follow when conducting a hypothesis test. So in every hypothesis test, you have something called the null hypothesis. Okay, null hypothesis. And the symbol for the null hypothesis uh, typically used is an H and it's a sub-zero, so H naught or H sub-zero. I'll usually just say H zero. Um, I could write a whole paragraph explaining what this is. Uh, the most important thing is this is always a statement of equality, so let's keep it simple. This is always equals, so this is always a statement of equality, okay, of equality. It's always a statement of equality. Okay, your null hypothesis will always have an equal sign, no matter what, always. Then you have something else in your hypothesis test, and every single hypothesis test has all of these components. It's called the alternate hypothesis. So the alternate, alternate hypothesis. Okay, the alternate hypothesis. And the alternate hypothesis uh, is usually denoted by H1. Or sometimes people use HA. You can also use a lowercase a. 
that's totally fine. Um, it doesn't matter. Some people call this the alternative hypothesis. You can call it alternative hypothesis or alternate hypothesis. It doesn't matter. I'll stick with, I guess, alternative. And there's three different cases for the alternative hypothesis, right? So I'm just going to make up a number. Let's use 100. So one case would be H1 mu less than 100. Okay, This would be called a left-tailed test. Whenever it's less than, it's called a left-tailed test. Okay, Left-tailed test. Another case would be mu greater than 100. Whenever it's greater than, it's called a right-tailed test. Okay, Right-tailed. And the very last one, okay, the very last one is when it's not equal to, okay? This one's called a two-tailed test, two-tailed test. So most of the time, you'll be able to read the question, and most of the time, the alternative hypothesis will come from the question. Most of the time, it will be your actual claim. Not always. We'll talk about that in another video. So null hypothesis, alternate hypothesis, you'll always have those two things. Typically, you read the question, and you figure these two things out. We'll practice doing that later. So you read the question, you figure these two things out. And then you compute something called the test statistic. And the p-value. Okay, the test statistic and the p-value. So the test statistic is computed usually with a formula, right? Depending on what you're doing, there's all kinds of formulas. If you open any statistics book, and like you look in the back of the book, there's a ton of formulas. The test statistic is computed using the null hypothesis. We're going to use the software for this. So I'm just going to say from StatCrunch. For us, we're going to use software, right? So for us, we're just going to use the software. The p-value is computed from the test statistic. So from test statistic. Okay. We'll talk about what the p-value means when we actually do an example. Uh, and so this is also from StatCrunch. So basically, we're going to be reading the questions. We're going to figure out the null and alternate hypothesis. We're going to go to the software, and it's going to give us all of this stuff. Right? The software is going to give us the test statistic and the p-value. Okay. Then in the problem, something else is given. It's called the level of significance. Okay, so every problem has to give you this. Okay, level of significance. And this is a new Greek letter. It's alpha. So it's alpha, 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 alpha. It looks like a little fish, right? Little, <laughs> little fish. Alpha, alpha. So what is this? It's usually 0.01 or 0.05. This is the probability. I'll go ahead and write it out. This is the probability that you do your entire hypothesis test, but you make a mistake. So what mistake? This is the probability of doing the entire test, and then you reject. So probability of rejecting your null hypothesis when in fact it is true. OK, when in fact it is true. So if you do your entire hypothesis test, uh, and you reject and you shouldn't have. So that's the probability that you make a mistake. What mistake? The specific mistake of doing your hypothesis test and rejecting the null hypothesis when in fact it is true. So usually it's 0.01 or 0.05. We'll talk about why later when we do a problem. It's actually really interesting why we why it's usually those numbers, right? Really, really interesting stuff. Um, so that's all the things that you'll find in a test, okay? And this next thing is really important, so I'm going to put it in a box. Okay, so important. So at some point in your test, you have to make a decision. Okay, so your decision is based off of this. So if your p-value is less than or equal to your alpha, you want to say reject h sub 0. Okay. So small reject, small reject, small reject, small reject. We'll talk about why when we do an example in another video. If your p-value is bigger than alpha, we're going to fail to reject. So the language is very important, right? Fail to reject H0. Okay, so totally worth memorizing this. Uh, it's pretty easy to memorize after you do a bunch of these. So small reject, bigger fail to reject. Small reject bigger fail to reject. All right, this video is getting kind of long, so now I'm going to go ahead and write down the five steps.
for a hypothesis test. And then in the next video, we'll start warming up and you know, start doing some of those steps. These are the steps for a hypothesis test. Okay, steps for a hypothesis test. So whenever you're doing these problems, whenever you're doing a hypothesis test, always number the steps. Always write it all out very, very carefully. So step one. So step one. Uh, step one is to find the null and alternate hypothesis. So, so state H0 and H1. So your null and alternative hypothesis. State these always. So you read the question and you figure these out. We're going to practice this in the very next video. Okay. Steps two and three for us are going to come from the software. Uh, we'll be using StatCrunch for our software. So we'll compute the test statistic. And then we'll compute the p-value. So for us, this is going to be from our software, which happens to be StatCrunch. So if you're using different software for whatever reason, um, you would, you know, you like the calculator does this as well. Like the TI-84 will do this. Excel does this, and so on. So we'll be using StatCrunch, though it's the easiest uh, one to use. Four. This is the test decision. Okay, this is the decision of the test. This is where we have to use the thing that's up here that says important, right? This. So in this step, we only write one of two things. We either write reject H0, so we write reject H0, or we write fail to reject H0, fail to reject H0. So we write one of those two things. And then step five, step five is the very last step. Step five is the interpretation. So we're going to interpret our results. Interpretation. So every single hypothesis test we do, we are going to follow these same five steps. The only thing that's going to change is steps one, two, steps one, two, and three, right? So really step one changes. This and then the stack crunch command will change also. If you're doing this by hand, the formula would, would change. Um, but steps four and five are always the same, right? It's always the same. So it's the same steps for every hypothesis test. I just realized this video has gone on 12 minutes. <laughs> Sorry. Um, in the next video, we're going to practice setting up the null and alternate hypothesis for ver alternative hypothesis for various types of hypothesis tests. That's it. I hope this video has been helpful.